Welcome back to another video on Sick Baggers YouTube channel. I'm Steve and today I'm going to be showing you guys how to do a basic two speaker and one amp install on a Street Glide Batwing fairing. We're going to be using the stock head unit. Now I did a video on this a couple of years ago where I kind of talked everybody through it and showed you some graphics on the screen on how to use a line output converter. Now today we're gonna actually tear into the fairing on this bike and I'm gonna show you the complete install. I will speed some things up, I will cut some things out. I get a lot of questions on the amp and two speaker fairing install or maybe you're adding lowers or speaker lids to the back. Over at Adban Black we do sell the lowers with the speaker pods and we also have the lid, the speaker lids that go in the back, six by nine, dual six by nine, eight inch, uh, all the different combinations of stuff that you can do to this bike. Our street glide over here has three amps and 10 speakers in it. Uh, but this one is just going to be a basic install guys. This customer brought the bike in. He's already bought the stuff. We're going to be putting two DS 18 speakers in here, the pro audio speakers. And I'll show you over there in a minute, the difference between these speakers and the Harley speakers, the ones we're getting ready to pull out of here, uh, kind of chintzy and even the upgraded boom audio speakers still kind of chintzy uh, for the price that you guys are paying for these so-called plug and play kits from harley uh, once you get them uh, you're they're not really that plug and play uh, and the price that you're paying for these things for these little chintzy speakers and just a small amp uh, you, there's a lot of stuff on the market that you can get out there that's a lot better than that and about a quarter of the price and we're going to show you how we do it this may not be the way that everybody does it this is how we do it and we've done plenty of bikes in here doing this exact method that we're getting ready to do to this bike so just going to go over the basics real quick of what the customer brought me just going to make this part real quick because we'll cover all this as we're actually installing it into the bike but the things that you're going to need to do it of course is some kind of amp that fits in the street glide fairing two six and a half inch pro audio speakers then of course we also have the pack line output converter and then the last thing is just kind of your amp install stuff you're going to have to have an inline fuse like this an eight gauge power wire a remote wire eight gauge ground wire and then of course your speaker wire and of course a couple of eyelets here that you're going to hook the uh, power and ground to the battery with and then on the amp side i use these little ferrules uh they slide the bare wire in there you have to have a special crimping tool to put that in and crimp that down onto the wire but that's what we're going to put inside the amp so we don't have any loose little wires going everywhere other than that you're just going to need a few basic tools uh, to get the fairing and stuff off and get the pods off and the gas tank off stuff like that so let's get into the install so the first thing we want to do is get the outer fairing off on your inner fairing you're going to have two screws on each side one here and one down here you remove those and then we'll go to the windshield <laughs> You're gonna have two different size bolts, a long one and a short one. Long one goes to the top, short one goes to the bottom. We'll go ahead and take the other two out. All we have left are the three windshield bolts, so we'll take the outer two out first. We have one long one left in the middle. When you release this bolt, this fairing will be loose, so make sure that you hang on to this so it doesn't fall. Always protect your fender with a blanket or a towel or something in case this drops down or you drop anything. And once I have that bolt out, I can pull this fairing slightly out and release the windshield. Go ahead and lay it down. Pull slightly out on the fairing and lift up. And you can set it down on your fender and reach in and disconnect the headlight. So the next thing we want to go ahead and do is remove the seat. And then we'll be able to remove the gas tank. We remove the gas tank to run the power in the ground underneath the tank in the wire harness. So once you have the seat off, you're going to have a black plastic cap right here over this tank bolt. You just simply pop that off. It just comes off. You're going to have a bolt here and one on the opposite side exactly the same, go ahead and remove those. Once you have those two bolts out, right here underneath where your seat was, you're gonna have a bolt here and a bolt here. Go ahead and remove those. And once you have the four bolts off, you're gonna go over to your fuel valve. To release this, you just simply push up on this chrome and then pull down on the whole thing. It's good to get a rag, you're gonna lose a little bit of gas. I'm going to get that on you. Now from here, you're going to follow this rubber line that comes from your fuel cap. You're going to pull that off right there. And if you have a stock one, you should have two lines. You should have one on each side. Go ahead and remove both of those. This is an aftermarket shroud, so it just has the one. Then if you follow the wire coming underneath the tank, you'll see it just goes to this gray clip right here. Simply push that down and unplug it. So once you have all of the bolts loose, 
all the wires loose then you're just simply going to lift up the tank and set it down make sure you got someplace soft to set it down so you protect the paint so now you just remove the top shroud to your wiring harness So what we want to do now is gain access to the battery and the first thing you have to do is remove the ECM module. There's a clip on both sides you just simply pry that out and lift that up. And then you can set that off to the side. And once you have the ECM out of the way you've just got a couple of clips here. This is your rear wiring harness and you can simply pull up on that and release it. And then your gray one that we took the fuel tank line off of, release it. Then you've got a small one over here you want to release it and now you're down to the cover that covers the battery once you have all the clips off the top then you just have the two bolts right here that you remove and that's going to allow you access to the battery once you have the bolts out you just push it forward and then come up with it and it'll release the plate from the top of the battery now from here what i like to do is just go ahead and disconnect the positive side of the battery we're going to be hooking the amp up to that anyway but this will make sure that we don't ground anything out while we're doing the amp install. So from here, I'm going to go ahead and start my ground and power up to the amp. We're going to run this in this tray. For now, we'll go ahead and hook up the ground, but leave the power side off. You want to separate the ground and the power in the tray. So run the ground down the right, power down the left. Get your red in, leave yourself enough room to go ahead and hook it to the battery later. So once you have the wires ran through the channel, go ahead and put your plastic cap back on. Make sure that when you're putting this on, as you're going down, you're not pinching any wires. Little wires can poke out the sides of this and you can pinch them real easy. If you have ABS on your bike, you will have the ABS lines that run through here along the side, which you'll have to put those back in too. Hey, I just want to take a quick second to tell everybody thank you for subscribing to the channel and checking out our videos. Guys, the channel's growing like crazy and we appreciate the hell out of it. Always free videos all of the time. We don't charge you for videos. We don't do Patreon. We don't ask for donations. None of that stuff. Always free videos all the time. Maintenance, how-tos, product reviews, all that stuff is on our channel. If you haven't already, check out the whole channel. A plethora of bagger-related videos on there. You can also find sick baggers over on Instagram and on Facebook. If you check us out over on Facebook, you can get a hold of some bagger swag. We do the t-shirts over on the Facebook side. We do a pre-order a couple of times a year. We get everybody's t-shirts out. So find SIK Baggers over on Facebook. Ask to join and we'll get you hooked up. Back to the video. So once you get the power and ground ran through the wiring harness, just feed it through to the front of the bike. Do not zip tie it off at this point. Just run it through and let it lay loose. So the first thing we want to do is set up this tray for the amp. Now you're going to notice that you've got three big wire harnesses right here. They're all attached to the top of this amp tray. Just take a flathead screwdriver and you pry it up and pry it off. And you just want to get those out of the way. So the biggest thing about putting an amp on here is making sure that you don't push into the back of these gauges. So any amp that'll fit across to your sideways and you're pushing it in, you want to make sure that you're not crimping any of these wires that go to your gauges. So just kind of push that up out of the way the best that you can. So the next thing we want to do is get the wires that are attached to the white pods on both sides, get those removed because we have to remove the pods to replace the speakers inside here. So you'll have one right here. Once again, flathead screwdriver, just get behind it, pry it out. You have another one down here it out now that goes to your auxiliary wire i don't have small enough hands to get in there so i just use a pair of channel locks and unplug that it just pulls straight out and then you're going to have your pink your two pink wires this is your speaker wires you want to go ahead and take those off i'm going to do that on both sides once again at the top Got another one down here that just lifts up and pulls off. You're going to pull it out of the way and then you just have this one here left. 
Now from here, we're just going to remove the pods. And I have an entire video on how to remove the pods. And I'll put the link down in the description below. So I'm going to cut the camera and remove these pods. Pretty simple concept, although it is a little bit time consuming. So these two bolts up here, you're going to have to remove on the side of the amp tray that go into the pod. To get to the back one, you're going to have to remove the wiring harness that goes into the volt gauge. You just simply unclip it and pull it out. Then from there, you're going to have three bolts, one in here, one here, and one down here. You remove those and then the real pain bolts there's three of them inside here that go this way into the side of the bottom of the pod that are underneath the radio so make sure that you watch that video and we'll show you exactly how to get these off all right guys so i've taken the time to get the bolts out up here on the amp tray the three down under here under the fairing which are a pain in the butt to get out and then the three up here i've left the one here to kind of hold the pod in I want to take this wire coming out of the pod. Remember the pink wires. Those pink wires are your front speaker wires. Go ahead and disconnect that. And then we pull that last remaining bolt and the pod will be loose. And we just pull the pod completely out just like that. And there's your cheapo Chensi Harley speaker. Well, once you have both pods out, you can go ahead and start removing these four screws to take out your stock speakers. So you can take the speaker out, turn it over, go ahead and unplug it. And there's your stock Harley speaker. Just to kind of give you a quick comparison to what you're getting, uh, your stock Harley speaker that we just pulled out, Boom Audio right here. This is that expensive Boom Audio upgrade. Not a whole lot of difference. I'm gonna lay that stock one down. Here's the Boom Audio. Here's the one we're getting ready to put in. So big, huge difference. Uh, between boom audio and a pro audio speaker now from here you want to go ahead and take this wire out There's a little rubber grommet down in there as you can see right here. You just pull on that work it around And that'll come out and You can take that wire harness and throw it over there with your Stock speaker now you're just down to your pod now with these ds18 pros I already know that the inside of this pod had to be modified I've installed a bunch of these in the pods But if your magnets are too big and you're actually hitting these cross members inside here You can cut those cross members out. They don't really do a whole lot not even really quite sure some kind of fan dangled Harley engineering uh, But they don't really do anything uh, my street glide over there actually has big holes cut in the back because the magnets were so big it actually is going to allow the speaker to breathe a little bit these pods work great when you're using chintzy cheap speakers because it just kind of amplifies the sound it helps the sound with a good pro audio speaker like that you don't need that so it's not a big deal if you have to modify the inside of this pod the only thing you want to watch for is modifying out to the edges where your bolt holes go up because these do have to go back on the bike once i do that I'm going to go ahead and create my two jumper wires that are going to go to the amp. I will go ahead and put that back through the hole where we pulled the other wire out. I'll go ahead and hook it back up to the speaker. Make sure that you're getting the positive and positive and negative on negative. We'll go ahead and put the speaker back down in there, lining up the four speaker holes. We'll go ahead and get our screws back in. It's pretty simple. I'm going to run these in tight. I'm going to go ahead and set up the next pod the same way, and then we'll get ready to put these back on the bike. Now that we have our speakers installed into our pods and our wires ran for the amp, I'll go ahead and start installing these back. You're just going to install these the same way that you took them off. So I'm just going to get these pods back in place, guys. Uh, with the outer three bolts first, you want to make sure that you don't pinch your new speaker wire when you're putting this on. The biggest thing here is making sure that you remember after you put these top bolts back in is to plug those gauges back in. You don't want to go starting your bike with those gauges disconnected. You're going to start throwing a bunch of codes. Now that we have our two gauges reconnected, guys, remember these wires that we pulled off right here. One of these went into the uh, auxiliary port right there, the auxiliary power port. So you want to peel that back just a little bit and expose that purple wire. That's where our jump wire for our remote to our amps going to go. And then of course the pink, like I said, is your speaker. This is the one that we disconnected and over there on the table, we took that wire out and threw it off to the side. That's where that connected. Now you got two choices here, guys. You can jump right off these wires right here, or you can go ahead and cut this off either way. So these two wires are going to be into the line out converter, out of the line out converter, into the amp, out of the amp, back into your speakers so i'm going to put this up here on a screen for you just so you can get a little bit better concept of what we're doing we're coming out of the pink speaker wires 
we're going into the line output converter. That's going to give us signal into the line output converter, out of the line output converter with RCA cables into your amp. That's the amp input. Now we've got signal from our speakers through the converter, converting it to the RCA, RCA into amp. Now the amp is going to amplify that signal and it, we're going to send that signal back to the speakers. So before we go any farther, I'm going to talk about the line output converter. There's several different ones on the market and they're all a little bit different. So make sure that you follow the instructions to the T on the line output converter that you bought. This one is the pack one, has very clear instructions on what you need to do. So instead of me sitting here letting you watch me hook and solder all this stuff up, just follow the directions on your line output converter. On a 2014 Street Glide, you got this nice cubby hole right over here on the left side of your radio. So once you get all the wires hooked up to your line output converter, tuck it in there, zip tie it, whatever you need to do to keep it from rattling around. So at this point, I pretty much have my line output converter hooked up. I've got my signal in from my pink wires into the line output converter, out of the line output converter with the RCA into the amp. So I go ahead and place the amp where I want it. That way I can take all of my wires, my power, my ground, my remote that comes off our auxiliary switch over there, get all of those wires pulled up right where I want them, cut them down to the perfect length, uh, speaker wires included. These will come over and go into the amp. So that's what I'm gonna do right now. Just go ahead and get all of my wires up to the amp where they need to go. We've got excess wires, so we need to trim them back and get everything so we have a nice clean install when we're done. So just real quick while I'm getting all my wires cut to length, I wanted to show you this little ferrule kit. Uh, you buy this little kit on Amazon, it's actually cheaper to buy this kit and get the crimping tool with it than it is to buy all of these individually in small packs of 10 or whatever. So if you have an amp like this that has a set screw that you put the bare wire in and uh, screw in, to hold it, uh, these really clean up the end. You just put this on the end of the wire, use the crimping tool to crimp it down. You just put it in there and then crimp it down. That gives that a nice, clean, no goofy wires going everywhere that can poke and like power to ground and mix up your speakers. So just something that I use here in the shop and wanted to share with you guys. So now we have ferrules on everything that is going to be going into the set screw side. This side, you're gonna have your power ground and remote and then you're just going to have your left and right speaker output going to the speakers the guys i use this braided line that goes over the power and ground wires so this braided line will actually go all the way down down the side of the neck and into the side of that wire loom that we showed you underneath the tank so after we get everything installed uh, it helps protect the wire but it also on that side of the neck where you've got like a six to eight inch strip where you can see the wire going from under your tank up to your fairing you just see this now you don't you're not going to see a red wire or just like a black ground wire that's going back to your battery so now i have all my wires hooked up and before i button this all up and zip tie it and make it look all pretty and make sure nothing's rubbing any metal we want to go ahead and set the voltage on the line output converter and we're going to go ahead and tune the amp all right guys at this point i pretty much have everything buttoned up i have all the wires buttoned up i have the line output converter set Follow the directions with the pack line out converter. You want to match the voltage of the output signal on the radio, which is right around four volts. So you use the control knobs on the side to match the voltage. That is going to make your volume go up and down, but that is not a volume knob. That is not a gain control. You're matching the voltage. And like I said, I'm not going to go into tuning because that's a whole nother ball game, guys. You're either going to have to do your homework on it or call a professional bike audio shop somebody that can help you with it if you really want to fine-tune this system you can get a DSP and that's a whole nother ball game but this system the way it is just like this is gonna be plenty loud for this customer going down the road at 70 mile an hour he's gonna be able to hear this so before you button up this fairing make sure that you have everything plugged back in that you unplugged on your motorcycle so from here guys I'm just gonna set up the camera I'm gonna speed this up but basically from here I'm gonna get the tank put back on I'm gonna get the uh, cover for the battery put back on the ECM back in place and also we'll get the outer fairing back on and this bike will be completely done
So that's pretty much it, guys. Thanks for hanging in there through this entire video. I know it was a long one, but uh, you know, you're talking about probably a four and a half to five hour install, taking your time trying to condense that down into 20 minutes. So uh, if you guys have any questions on this install, you guys know the deal, comment box down below. There's not a whole lot of other stuff that I can really share with you on this install because the things that I didn't really concentrate on, like the uh, line out converter, that's gonna be based on what kind of line out converter that you get and tuning the amp. Like I said in the beginning of the video, I'm not going into tuning. The biggest thing there is, is don't treat your gain knob like a volume knob, it's not. You turn that and it's gonna get louder, but uh, you turn that gain and it is gonna get louder, but that's not what it's for. It's not a volume knob. You're gonna cause distortion. Distortion will smoke your speakers. So just keep that in mind when you're tuning and you'll be good to go. But like I said, got any questions on this one, comment box down below. I'll try to help you the best that I can. I'm gonna get over here and get the next project up on that lift. And until the next video, as always, be safe and keep your knees in the breeze.